Panchatattva ki jai. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadadar Siva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vindha Jayanti Sri Advaita Gadadadar Siva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vindha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitya Nandha Sri Advaita Garadandar Siva Sari Ghor Bhakti Vindhara Chaitanya Nandam Yarda Dar Shiva Sari Ghor Bhakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hari Hari Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Ram 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Hari 
हरे राम हरे हम राम हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम गोविंद जाय जाय गोपाल जाय जाय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद जाय जाय गोविंद झाय झाय गोपाल झाय झाय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद झाय झाय गोविंद झाय झाय गोपाल झाय झाय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद झाय झाय हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे भादे भरे भरे भाया पंच तद्वा पंच तद्वा पंच तद्वा झा पंच तद्वा पंचायत घोर हरि भरे 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 हरि भाय जाय भबू भाबू भाबू भा जाय भबू भा झाय झाय भबु भाबु भा भबु भाय भबु भाबु भाय जय जय भंदी हरि हरि भा शील प्रभु पान की जय हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय Today's transcendental quiz. Okay, ready? Here's a question. Okay, in the Bhagavad Gita, there's two verses that are very similar. Who knows which verses they are, in terms of the message and the numbers? <laughs> okay, continue. Okay, and then the other one. Ah, so what two numbers are they? First is nine chapter. Take take a guess at the number. It's a higher number, and then nine thirty-four, and then eighteen sixty-five. Right. Okay. And these verses are actually summarize at least in the first two lines, which are the similar, the whole uh, process of bhakti, man mana, always think of me. Krishna says, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage to me. And Prabhupada comments that in that four things, the whole process of bhakti is there. To remember Krishna, to... Uh, Worship Krishna. Um, always think of me to become devoted, become his devotee, 
in other words, execute devotional service, and uh, to offer obeisances, homage, prayers, like that. Mm. And the whole thing is there. <clears throat> okay, so we'll continue with our ninth chapter, verse number 21. <clears throat> Almost confidential knowledge. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Titam Bhuktvam Sarva Loka Vishalam Shine Pune Martya Lokam Vishanti Evam Traya Dharma Manu Prapanan Gata Gatam Kama Kama Labante Tatam Te Tam Bhuktva Sarva Loka Vishalam Shine Punye Martya Lokam Vishanti Evam Traya Dharmam Anuprapana Gata Gatam Kama Kama Labante Tetam Bhukva Sarva Loka Vishalam Shine Pune Martya Loka Vishanti Evam Traya Dharmam Anuprapana Gata Gatam Kama Kama Labante Sarvalokam, <coughs> heaven, Vishalam, vast, Shine, being exhausted, Punye, the results of their pious activities, Marchalokam, to the mortal earth, Visanti, fall down, Evam, thus, Twayi, 
of the three Vedas, dharmam, doctrines, anuprapana, following, gata agatam, death and birth, kama kama, desiring sense enjoyment, labante, attain. So this verse follows very closely the previous verse. When they have thus exhausted vast, when they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure, and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. Hmm. Prabhupada's purport. One who is promoted to the higher planetary system enjoys a longer duration of life and better facilities for sense enjoyment, yet one is not allowed to stay there forever. One is again sent back to this earth upon finishing the resultant fruits of pious activities. Who he who has not attained perfection of knowledge as indicated in the Vedanta Sutra, Janmad Yasya Yataha, or in other words, he who fails to understand Krishna, the cause of all causes, becomes baffled about achieving the ultimate goal of life, and is thus subjected to the routine of being promoted to the higher planetary systems, and then coming down as if situated on a Ferris wheel which sometimes goes up and sometimes comes down. Wow, what a sentence that was. That was a paragraph in one sentence. Whoa. The purport is that instead of being elevated to the spiritual world, from which there is no longer any possibility of coming down, one simply revolves in the cycle of birth and death on higher and lower planetary systems. One should better take to the spiritual world to enjoy an eternal life of bliss and knowledge and never return to this miserable material existence. Om Agyanti Mirandas Yagina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmay Shri Guravena Mahashri Chaitanya Manobista Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swapadati Kaman Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Divaram Daswami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorvani Pracharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubis Chakripa Sindhu Paeva Chapatita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Hadwaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Krishna takes some time out after describing who he is in different manifestations of himself to talk about the heavenly realm. So in these two verses, he describes, um, you know, going to the heavenly planets and enjoying great sense gratification. But then in this verse, he says, well, you can do that, but then it's, you're going to, Shini Punya Vishanti means that just like you uh, put some gas in your car and then you drive and then after some time the gas runs out. So pious activities are like like money. So you can spend it and after you spend it, it's gone. So in the same way, the these living entities who attain by pious credits, the heavenly planets are there for a certain period of time. And then after their pious credits are exhausted, in other words, within a certain period of time, depending on what, how much pious credits that person has, then again they fall down back to the material world. So they stay within the cycle of birth and death. Am Brahma Bhuvana Loka Purnya Vritti Arjuna Mamupetu Purnar Janma Naiti Mamiti Surjuna. So Krishna says that ultimately um, in every place within the material world is misery. 
Dukaliyam is why? Because there's birth and death. The living entity is not supposed to accept the material body and undergo the, the system of birth and death. It's a very miserable situation. It f puts one in an illusionary state that one is this body, and therefore whatever happens to the body is happening to that person. And mostly, people suffer. I was just hearing about one person who was undergoing a lot of suffering because of some difficulty with pregnancy. And uh, she's almost practically not even, I mean, it's quite a critical case. So here we can see that, you know, even a devotee sometimes has to go through this miserable situation because as long as you have a material body, that's just the way it is. <laughs> the mistake is getting a material body. And that's mentioned by Rishabde. It's kind of a cold air coming in from somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from. You got the air conditioning on? No. <laughs> Where is it coming from? Yeah, it's kind of cold. Okay, just I'm going to put on. I'm going to even look uglier than I am right now. So, <laughs> okay. Okay, now I'm completely ugly. <laughs> so, yeah, so this um, this going up and down, Karanam Gunasango Sho Sarasad Jona Janmasu. In the 13th chapter, Krishna makes this point from, that the living entity revolves in the different cycles. And then sometimes in higher planetary systems, sometimes in lower planetary systems, sometimes in a very apparently nice body, and sometimes in the body of an animal, and sometimes even in lower. So, Michi Mayadavase, Kachyo Ham, Bubu Bubai, Jeev Krishna Das, E Vishwash, Koli Dana Nukanai, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur speaks that, yeah, that. Being washed away by the waves of the material energy, everyone is being pushed from one side to another. Sometimes you're in Slovenia, sometimes you're in Croatia, sometimes you're in Kosovo, <laughs> sometimes you're in, you know, America. So, you know, even within the the realm of one's lifetime, we're being pushed from one one position to another. And people think that they're making choices and moving according to their choices, but they're not. They're just plugging into a particular mode of material nature. And based on that mode, it pushes one in a certain direction. So it appears that the living entity is actually choosing where they go, but they're only choosing it by their activities and not by their personal choices like that. So... Therefore, what Krishna is saying here is don't waste time in this cycle of birth and death because no matter how nice your material situation is, it's temporary. <laughs> and even within that temporary situation, we find people have a, a lot of problems, just like in the statistics in the world today show that people who are the most affluent, the most wealthiest, the children born in families that are quite wealthy are undergoing more mental suffering than people in general. Uh, poor people have a, lo a lot lesser suicide rate than rich people. It's interesting. That's, that's actually a statistic, and it's not just a small portion. The dichotomy is very big. In other words, suicide amongst affluent persons are more, it's a higher, especially in the teenage years. The teen, teenage suicides are the highest in the, in the lifespan. People, mostly teenagers commit suicide because uh, they're under a lot of pressure from school, from parents, from peers, from just from society in general. 
And generally they take, a lot of them just take to intoxications and to, to somehow uh, try to experience some way out of the suffering. But that's just like adding suffering to suffering. So we see that, uh, yeah, there was one, I remember one uh, very extremely rich family in India, I think, I can't remember the hidden, I can't remember the name of the family. It wasn't, it might have been the Beerlers. The Beerlers are very rich. Anyway, their son, young boy, t teenager, committed suicide. And now the parents were really, really devastated. How is it this boy has everything in life and more? He's, he's got so much and he took his own life. So they were completely confused along with being saddened. So they went from sadhu to sadhu around the world. They kept going to the different sadhus to get answers. They came to Radhanath Maharaj ultimately and spoke to him. And he explained how external facilities don't really bring happiness. He very clearly explained to them that of course they were able to accept it up to a certain point, but because their whole life was centered around having so much wealth and power, position, influence, and thinking that this is the success in life, uh, they couldn't really uh, completely understand the under, that these things don't bring happiness. In fact, what happens is that when people achieve these things, which the people are told that these things are the success in life, and when you get them, you don't find the happiness you're looking for, and then you think, well, what else is left? There's nothing else left. So therefore, people sometimes take to intoxication or just live a very reckless life, or sometimes we find suicide. Suicides are very high in the world. It's crying. Usually, I think, I don't know what the, I know the percentage of successful suicides is very low according to how many people attempt suicide. It's not easy to kill yourself, it's pretty hard. It's not, some, it's easy to kill somebody else. <laughs> so the success rate is usually one in 10. So every 10 people who try, one is successful. <laughs> but, it's a high rate of attempted, so they have these suicide lines now all over the world where you can, if you're feeling suicide, there's phone numbers you can call, and then people will talk to you and try to talk you out of it. <laughs> and it's a very high thing, especially in affluent countries, countries that are what we say advanced technologically, materially, industrially. These are the countries that people really uh, are, there's a lot of frustration levels, and therefore there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, what we say, mental illness. You know, mental illness is the highest form of illness in the world now. Of course, this COVID has outrun mental illness this 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 particular year, at least. But pre prior to that, and even even there, we see that mental illness is the highest more than cancer. Cancer was the number one leading killer, especially lung cancer caused by smoking. That was the number one killer, at least in many countries. Uh, but now uh, mental illness, various times, and people suffer from depression all the time. Even devotees we find sometimes become depressed. They've been depressed because the, you know, the maha wasn't on time. <laughs> Or, or, you know, I have to go out on book distribution, I don't want to. <laughs> so there's, devotees get depressed also too. I mean, it's not a small thing, it's quite, not pervading, but devotees, there are many devotees who suffer from depression. <laughs> it shouldn't be like that because it's just a lack of understanding of how to perform devotional service. But depression is so strong that it happens everywhere, all, all levels of society. 
like that. Depression is frustration comes by unfulfilled desires or being in a situation where you can't see any way out. Uh, you just look one way and it just you don't see any solution any way or the other. Nothing seems to give you any any re, re, reprieve from that situation. So this is common. Therefore, the mind is also an organ that gets sick. Even the, the this is only in the, within the last couple of decades that they realize that the mind is also an organ that gets sick. They didn't put mental illness in, into a category of regular illnesses, but lately they have. Because the mind also works in a certain way. <clears throat> and if the mind is not <clears throat> satisfied, it finds ways <clears throat> to express its dissatisfaction in different ways. So keep the mind always peaceful <clears throat> by chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> or keep the mind connected to the spiritual realm by chanting Hare Krishna. Prabhupada even says um, in one statement <clears throat> that sometimes you, <clears throat> he uses an analogy. Uh, you're by a river and you uh, drop some coin in the river and it falls to the bottom. So you're trying to find the coin, so you're trying to go down, but you're shaking up the water, and when you shake up the water, the water becomes unclear. You can't see it because you're moving things around. So if you stop moving the water around, the water settles, and then you can see more clearly where your object fell. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, yeah, if the devotees are feeling some depre some unhappiness, depression, he says, don't don't worry. Don't get in anxiety. Just sit down and chant. That's all. And and for extended period of chanting, that'll you'll after a while, it'll rectify the situation. So here's the antidote that ever if the devotees ever feel. Just take to the holy name and but chant. You got to keep chanting and chanting and chanting. Don't give up. Chanting <clears throat> and don't. Just con continue to, don't think, well, I, I chanted for a while. No, keep chanting until that, your consciousness actually changes. And it will, if you remain determined in your chanting. So that's why we, we preach that the chanting of the Holy Name is actually the panacea. Panacea means the complete cure for all forms of illness, mental, physical, social, aesthetic, spiritual, any type of anomalies or difficulties in the world, the Holy Name remains the antidote or the medicine. Enechi asadi maya nasi ragi harinama maha mantra lao tu mi magi. Enechi, enechi asodi maya nasi ragi harinama maha mantra lao tu mi magi. Uh, al sodi means uh, medicine. So that is the medicine for the age in this age, is the holy name of the Lord. Sometimes devotees get mm, very much absorbed in service, and sometimes they push the holy name to the side or relegate it to a very lesser position in their day. But the holy name should be foremost in our day. <clears throat> It should be the first thing of the day and it should be the most important part of our day in terms of how we put all our time, energy, and concentration in that because it's it's mantra meditation. We're meditating on the holy name, which is Krishna himself. Therefore, we're meditating on Krishna in the form of sound. And sound, everyone, even from the clinical point of view, from the secular point of view, sound has healing propensities, just like sound also has uh, propensities to cause sickness too. If sound is bad or unpleasant, it disturbs one. And continuous unpleasant sounds can cause people to become mad or crazy or just, you know, deranged. But in the same way, pleasant sounds, especially the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, which is above all pleasant sounds, it's transcendental to everything material, 
will again bring the mind more back to its normal state of functioning like that. So never, and don't worry about if you ever have any difficulties in Krishna consciousness, here's the antidote. Uh, one of my god brothers, very senior devotee, it was Naranjan Swami. Actually today is his birthday also. <laughs> today. Yeah. yeah, I just remembered. Um, he told me a story where devotees were coming to him regularly with problems. And uh, so, and it was a regular thing. So he decided, after hearing how devotees were coming regularly, he decided to to give every lecture for the next year on the Holy Name. So he did that. He just talked about the Holy Name every lecture for a year. And he said after one year, more than 50% of the problems were reduced. So really, that's the uh, solution to any of our, our problems. We need to have, if we, if we have that faith, it becomes easy. But if the faith is not there, we have to practice chanting until we develop that, that taste again. Um, you just have to do it and have faith that it works. And it does. And that's guaranteed. So, therefore, here's the antidote for all problems. Therefore, one doesn't have to aspire for a better material situation. All in one. Better material situation simply means change your consciousness. Just like I came when I came to Slovenia back in June, uh, I went into that apartment where I am, and it was hellish in that apartment. The, and hell was actually nice compared to that apartment. <laughs> and the, the energy there was so bad. I could feel it. I just wanted to run out every minute. But I thought, after a while, I thought, well, I'm, here I am. I've got to make it, make it or break it, you know. <laughs> So just continually chanting, continually putting pictures all around, continually trying to arrange the place in a more vastu organization, um, getting help from all kinds of energies to purify. And then I notice ever since then, everything, the atmosphere has changed considerably. Now I don't want to run out, I just walk out. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so... Yeah, so we can also purify our life and purify everything around us simply by a constant chanting of the holy names, yeah, like that. As the verse says, Sarna sarvatma snapadam param vijayate shi krishna sankirtanam. Uh, sarvatma snapadam means complete bath. That means one who chants the holy names of the Lord seriously everything in their life becomes purified. Not only them, but everything in connection with them. Their home, their possessions, everything. Even their friends and relatives get the benefit of their chanting, even if they don't chant, just by knowing that person. That's how powerful Krishna's holy name is. If we seriously take to the chanting of the holy name, we, have, we will never have any problems in Krishna consciousness. Never. You'll always be in the best position, and when you get challenges, you'll always have the uh, the uh, determination to overcome these challenges simply by chanting Hare Krishna. One of the things that's recommended, we should pray to the Lord that to please remind us to chant His name. By saying, my dear Lord, when I forget chanting Your name, Please do something to remind me. That way we can chant, try to chant all the time, not just japa, but constant. Keeping that holy name always with us is keeping Krishna always with us in the best, powerful, most direct and powerful way, Krishna's holy name. So, yeah. So there's no use to simply try to uh, rearrange our material situation to make it any better. Because you can't. You're destined to be in a particular situation, but your, your, your opportunity is to get out of that situation by simply by purifying your consciousness. 
As consciousness change, environments change. Just like they say, if you want people to be nice to you, be nice to them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it works like that. So whatever you put out will also come back to you. That's that's not on, that's in all aspects of life like that. So when we put out Krishna consciousness, then everything becomes wonderful. And the holy name is the direct connection to higher consciousness or transcendental consciousness. So uh, Prabhupada after explaining how there is so much sense enjoyment in higher realms of existence, now he explains it's useless because shinye punya vishanti, uh, it you just marta marcha lokam, you come back to this material world where again suffering is is more prominent. So. So don't worry about too much about your material situation, just try to change your consciousness, that's all. <laughs> and purify your consciousness. That's the solution to all problems. Because mm -hmm. consciousness is everything. Mm -hmm. I just thought of a little saying. There was one saying, a, a, a little boy, he says, boy, as I get older, I can see my father becomes more intelligent. That means he's starting to realize as he's getting older the intelligence of his father. It's always been there, but he didn't see it. And as he, now he grows, and he grows in his consciousness, he starts to see what actually is there. <laughs> so everything is based on consciousness. Krishna consciousness is the perfection of all consciousness. Okay, so uh, any questions, comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Mm. Mm, I heard from, from a devotee, I think Bhakti Vikash Maharaj once said that if people are really mentally sick, that uh, it's not enough just to chant Hare Krishna. I was not inquiring, but uh, they say that he was talking about this, and yeah. and, and we had this girl. It's just we, we found out that she's in mental hospital a few days ago, and she was really chanting like anything when she was here, and doing all the reading and everything. But still, she ended up in the in the mental hospital. So yeah, there is that element where people have this anartha that gets stuck and nothing works. Chanting will come into their life in a, in a helpful way at a certain stage, but they have to go through certain breakages or blocks in their, in their mental way of living. Because the mind can really confuse things up, can, can really, they're not able to take advantage of the chanting because of their state of consciousness. Which, therefore, we have what is called devotee counseling. But the devotee counseling ends up with chanting Hare Krishna. But that's not the first lesson. You have to get people to, just like in the same way, if people are starving and you tell them to chant Hare Krishna, they're, they're going to chant food, food, food. <laughs> so, yeah. So you, you have to sometimes deal with severe problems like that. But I, in general, the holy name is just there for everyone. But in certain cases, you have to get people to change their way of thinking through various psychological processes. And that is what counseling is all about, like that. And their devotees also have problems like that. So Maharaj is right, but he's talking about a certain element. And so that's there also. So we have devotees who do devotee counseling. 
but ultimately they end up with giving people the process mm -hmm. once they're at a certain stage where they can receive it. You know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, also, uh, in connection what Bhakta Marko was saying, I heard on a lecture, also from Bhakti Vikas Maharaj, that mental problems are uh, happening because you have a too big false ego, and um, so that is. Well, they can happen for different reasons. A lot of mental problems happen. When people are in a very deficient or a dysfunctional childhood, when they grow up in a family that's dysfunctional, they develop certain mental problems. It's not necessarily, uh, well, of course, that's their karma also, being in that family. <laughs> yeah. And so ultimately, there is a false ego element there. But we see people are victimized by the environment and by other people. That's because they're weak or they're susceptible to such things. Just like I know, I know there is, I won't mention any names, but I know one person. Uh, he, uh, he, had a, he was one member of a family of, I think there was about nine children in the family. So one day his father went on a rampage and started, he killed his mother and practically all the, the all family members. Except him and his brother were the only two people that survived. And seven children were killed along with the wife. He saw it. He watched it. <laughs> and that stayed with him his whole life. And he had that same tendency to be violent but he knew it was wrong. So he, but he kept fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. And he was a devotee. So he was able to somehow fight it his whole life, mostly. But at one point he committed suicide. Because he knew that if he got so, it got, actually got so bad within him that he knew that he was also capable of doing what his father did because it left such an impression on his mind. So this is how the mind is so impressionable. It picks up things and it can be there for a lifetime sometimes, not only just for one lifetime. So therefore that's why they say in the early part of life, when you raise children, that is the most important part of their life. And from the earliest, earliest time you plant the seeds of the, of you know, good consciousness, good care, love. Just like if children grow up in the family, they don't get proper love. They don't. They don't know how to love when they get bigger. They can't show love. They can't really give love like that. They can't receive love because they don't know what it is. They never had it when they grew up like that. And so this is how the the mind can be so impressionable and so easily. Uh, affected by, you know, experiences in life. <clears throat> just like Prabhupada was saying, just like if you see something that's not so pleasant <clears throat> and it's something really powerful, even though you leave the situation that that thought stays in your mind, <clears throat> And it can come back again at different times and, and just bother you. Just the, the thought, that vision of something comes in your mind like that. <laughs> and so that's, the mind is a very difficult entity to figure out. It's very complicated and very, very prone to wrong ways of acting like that. That's why the mind is the most dangerous thing. Krishna gives so much talks about, you know, elevate yourself by the mind and not degrade yourself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. One who, one who controls the mind, the mind is the best of friend. One who fails to do so, his very mind is his, 
his worst enemy. One who controls the mind, the super-soul has already reached. For him, happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold appear all the same. A mind is very impressionable like that. So, yeah. So, uh, there was another point I was going to make. Forgot it. It was about the mind. Yeah, so the uh, this is the nature of the mind. So always be careful what you think. Oh, I was just going to just reflect on my own personal experiences. Since I've been not traveling for a long time, I, I traveled since 1985 continuously. This is the first year. And this is that's been like 35 years. I haven't stopped traveling since 1985. <laughs> and so I've been to many bedrooms, bathrooms, <laughs> kitchens, <laughs> so many places. And while I, in the last few months, even today it happened, all of a sudden my mind just flashes on some place I've been. It doesn't happen when I'm traveling, but ever since I've stopped, all of a sudden the mind will go to somewhere. It's not, it's not something unpleasant, it's just I'm going to some place I've been. It's just a little part of that place, maybe I'm in a room that I was in, or I'm with a person that I was with. It just, all of a sudden, for no reason, Without any any prior notice, my mind just boom, and there I am somewhere. And for me, it's not it's nice. I'm remembering these different places. But I notice it's been happening more often now since I stopped traveling. Because I guess my mind is more peaceful. Maybe you don't think so, but anyway. <laughs> Well, and the thing is, I don't. My life is is less complicated now. It's less. That's where. That's the really the understanding. When you have to constantly travel, things become very. You're always busy making plans to travel. You're always busy get, going to the places. You're always busy re relocating in the places. You're always busy uh, trying to organize the place when you get there. <laughs> I think I've been in that sannyas room, I don't know, for at least a couple of years, if you add all the days up. <laughs> so, yeah. so we, you know, we're always, when you're moving, your life is, your mind is moving along with that. When you slow down, your mind starts to relax, and, and the impressions of your previous experiences more come to the forefront of your consciousness. Like that. So that's how, yeah, this is a little indication of how the mind works. It's very mysterious. And therefore, you, it says never trust your mind. <clears throat> and Prabhupada makes a whole lecture out of that. Always distrust. Because the mind can at any time take you someplace you don't want to be. And sometimes you can't get out of that. Like that. Even Prabhupada said, you know, when he was on the plane, because on the plane they show movies and everybody can watch movies. And sometimes Prabhupada said, yes, you get them, you see these flashes of these movies and then these impressions, they stay in your mind like that. Enache asadi maya nasi baralagi harinama maha mantra lao tumi magi. Yeah, so this is the way to purify the mind, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Don't allow all these thoughts to go into your mind, because the mind is always crowded with thoughts like that. You have a question? Oh, you have the microphone. Oh, okay. 
Oh, okay. Thanks. Thank you for giving it back. <laughs> glad we gl we're glad you didn't keep it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we give seminars sometimes. I think I did it here on the mind. So it's a really complex organ. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So always try to keep the mind connected to something spiritual, especially the holy name. And you'll always be in the best position. I'll give you another example how the mind works. One very respectable political person during the time of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta came to see Bhakti Siddhanta. He would come occasionally and he would meet Maharaj and ask questions. So this time when he came, he approached Maharaj. Maharaj said, I'm actually a little occupied now, but whatever questions you have, go to the Pujaris and the Pujaris will answer your questions. So he went. And when he came to the Pujaris, the Pujaris said, well, actually, right now we're, we're polishing the deities brass and silver, and we have a lot, so um, would you like to help us? He said, yeah. So he sat down, and, and for some time he was working polishing, and finally, after some time, everything was finished. So when he was done, the devotees, the Pujaris asked, okay, well, what is your questions? He said, thank you. I have no questions. <laughs> he got up and he left. And as he was leaving, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati noticed. He said, oh, did the Pujaris answer your questions? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. So what, he, what we're saying is that when he engaged his mind in devotional service, everything became clear. <laughs> That's the power of Bhakti. <laughs> You can solve a problem by trying to confront the problem directly, or you can solve the problem by going to a higher level of consciousness where the problem doesn't exist anymore. Two ways. Okay, so anything, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. <laughs>